Oh my gosh. All right, so I know what you might be thinking. Ryan, what did you even just shave off your face? And the answer is really nothing. I didn't really shave off much. I just kind of cleaned up my neckline, edged out the corners a little bit, made it look a little bit more respectable and lining everything up and kind of getting rid of the uh, loose ends because I don't know if you guys can tell, but I have the world's patchiest beard and I'm trying something new. I'm trying to grow it out to see if it grows in a little bit fuller or thicker. So I'm gonna grow it out for the next two or three months, see what happens, and hopefully it fills out a little bit because I've just been shaving it all for the past two years because it's so patchy and it never grows back any thicker. So we're just trying out something different. Don't really know if it's gonna work. Anyways, since we've postponed the trip to Alaska, I have started heading south. Currently, I think we're in Northern Arizona. Maybe we're in Nevada, I don't know. We're right on the border somewhere, we're at a Walmart. I'm pretty sure we're in Nevada. But last night before I went to bed, I went into Walmart and I picked up four of these little pill capsules because my dad called me with the idea that since I'm going to all these campsites all over the country, it'd be a fun way to kind of interact and also give back to you guys to take these little pill stash keychains and turn them into my channel's very own little geocaching experiment. So essentially my plan is to take one of these pill bottles, fill it up with a little note, post-it note like this, write some random code on it, Kind of like that right there. This is just a sample code. It won't be the actual code that's in the uh, pill bottle. But then I'll roll it up just like this, pop it in the pill bottle. And then whenever I get to my campsite, I don't know if it'll be every single video or every other video or just every so often, I'm gonna hide one of these somewhere near where my campsite is and put the coordinates to it in the description. And whoever finds it and sends me a video of themselves opening this up and showing me the code that I have written inside that only I know they will win a prize. And today is gonna to be the first day of that series where I'm putting a code in this little pill bottle. I've written a new code on here. We're sealing it up. And then once we get to my campsite tonight, I'm gonna to hide it. And whoever finds it first and sends me a video of them opening it, um, either via email or DM on Instagram or in my Discord group is going to win the first prize that I'm giving away on this channel and what the prize is is going to kind of depend on how far this is away from civilization or how difficult it is to find and this one's going to be pretty easy to find and pretty close to a major city so whoever drives out there and finds this is going to win a $250 Amazon gift card and a free piece of merch from my store so make sure you watch this video all the way through because at a random point in the video once I get to my campsite I'm just going to walk out and hide this and hopefully someone finds it so Good luck. Also, whoever finds it, I will showcase the video of you finding it in a future video on my channel. And I'll give you guys a shout out so that you guys can know when they've actually been found and whether it's worth it to drive out there. I'll also announce it when it's found immediately on my Instagram, so make sure you follow me there so you're not driving out to places to find these things when they've already been found. So for today's video, and I've had this idea for a while because I saw someone comment it once on a older video and I tried to go back and find it today, but I couldn't find it. But I should try to make a pizza from scratch. So today we're gonna drive out to our campsite in the desert, try to make a pizza from scratch. So I don't really need to get too much from Walmart. I already have all the uh, ingredients for the pizza dough. So I just need stuff for the sauce and then for the toppings. And yes, pineapple does belong on pizza. I also need to get a uh, small pizza pan because those bigger ones that are back there just don't fit in the small oven that I have in the van. All right, and I think we've got everything we need to go make some pizza in the desert. I hate walking back to the van after I sleep in a Walmart parking lot because I always park all the way in the back when I sleep here, so it's always a hike when I'm walking in there. So instead of doing one large pizza, because that doesn't fit in my oven, I want to take these two small pizza trays and just make two small personal pizzas, because I think these will both fit in there at the same time. So 
So I don't think that I'm gonna go too crazy off-roading today because I don't know if you could tell when I was walking outside, but it has been super rainy out here where I am for the past like two or three days. And it's supposed to rain the rest of the day and there's a flood watch and a lot of those spots that are off-road past their areas that are washes. So I don't wanna risk getting caught anything. So I'm just gonna to head to this spot that's kind of it's right off the highway. So I don't think we're gonna run into any issues, but it is not the most beautiful spot, I don't think. So I guess we'll see once we get there. This will be our lovely campsite for the night. It looks like there's a storm going off in the distance. I saw some lightning over there earlier too. So it's also nice because this spot is like actually extremely level, which is kind of hard to find sometimes, but I'm just gonna pull up right here, opening up to that wonderful view out there. We're actually kind of far from the uh, highway, so we don't gotta worry about the noise coming from that trying to sleep tonight, which is always a benefit. Yeah, in the description online, it said this place was a large gravel parking lot kind of thing on the side of the highway. So I wasn't really expecting much, but it's actually pretty nice out here. Nice mountain views in the distance and then over there as well. Not bad. And it's also nice because nobody else is here camping out, at least not for right now. So we got the uh, whole spot to ourselves. And I'm kind of glad it's not raining like right where we are so that I can keep my doors open because when it rains, I can't leave the doors like open because the rain kind of just pours off the side of that and then down onto my cabinets and all over the floor. I need to install a, a rain gutter or something up there, but I just haven't gotten to it yet. And typically when I'm on the West Coast, there's not a lot of rain, so I don't have to worry about it. But I guess this time of year is just extra rainy. So before I do anything, I think I'm gonna get started on making the pizza dough because it's probably gonna take the longest amount of time because I gotta let it rise for a little while. But I actually had most of the ingredients for this already because I had a bunch of stuff left over from when I made the beignets and it's kind of, a lot of the same stuff goes into it. I really need to go out and buy myself a large mixing bowl because I find myself needing one a lot and not having it. So the first thing I need to do is take some water and warm it up in my kettle to about 110 degrees. And then once we get this water warmed up, we're gonna have the sugar and the yeast to it. And the sugar is what's gonna kind of feed this yeast in the dough. So I'm just gonna use my like electric thermometer to make sure that we get this water the right temperature. I don't know if that's gonna work, but I guess we'll see. I'll just heat it up for a little bit, take it off and see what temperature we're at. All right, I'll let that heat up for a little bit. Let's see if we're warm enough. All right, so it looks like we're at just about 124 degrees. So I'm gonna let that cool off for like two minutes to get down to 110. And then we can mix them together. All right, we are just about at 110 degrees. So pull that out, add that to our mixing pot. Then I'm gonna add a teaspoon of sugar to that that I've already pre-measured out. And then the active dry yeast. And we'll mix that together and let that sit for like 10 minutes. While well, we wait for that, the storm looks wild. You can like see clear skies through the like curtain of rain off in the distance. It's starting to get pretty windy out here too. It is beautiful though. Look at these clouds. Anyways, I think my yeast is done. Getting ready to meet his friends, AKA flour and salt. So to the yeast sugar mixture, we're gonna add two and a half cups of flour. Hopefully it doesn't blow everywhere. And then two tablespoons of olive oil. And yeah, it's a good thing I didn't drive out into the middle of nowhere because I just got a emergency alert on my phone saying that there's a flash flood warning. So I'm glad we kind of stayed up on dry land and didn't drive through any washes. But the last thing this mixture needs is a teaspoon of salt. There we go. And now I'm gonna spend the next 15 to 20 minutes kneading this by hand because I do not have a standing mixer. Looks like it might be starting to rain here. I'm getting some mist kind of blown into the van. So I might have to close my doors here for a minute. Yeah, it's starting to rain. I'm gonna close the door. I don't know if you guys can hear the wind going on outside, but it is uh, it's going crazy. And this is actually mixing a lot easier than the beignet mix was. So that's nice. <laughs> It is getting crazy windy out there. I looked at the weather though, there's no tornado warnings or tornado watches, so hopefully we should be good on that front. But also being in the van does kind of amplify the sounds of winds coming through these vent fans, so it sounds a lot worse than it actually is. I'm not gonna lie though, 
With the way the wind was blowing when we got to this spot, I thought we were going to be avoiding most of the rain, but I guess not. All right, we've got it kneaded together in a ball. Oh no, it's starting to hail. I really hope they don't get big. I don't know if you can hear them hitting the top of the van. It's really raining out there now. It is kind of nice and peaceful when it starts to rain. As long as the weather doesn't get too bad, it's nice listening to the kind of pitter patter on the roof. That's some decent sized hail. It's probably like the size of peas. I don't know how well you guys are going to be able to hear it hitting the roof. I just hope it doesn't get any bigger. Oh my gosh. Ice rocks falling out of the sky. I'm not really worried about getting any kind of cracks in my solar panels. I'm just worried about my plastic vent fans cracking because I have like industrial grade solar panels on the top that I think can withstand up to like quarter size hail. So and it's also going to be kind of hard to talk with all these little missiles hitting the roof, creating a bunch of noise. All right. So now that we've got our dough formed into a ball, I'm going to go ahead and cover this up in some saran wrap and then just leave it on the counter and get started making the sauce. This rain is really annoying. All right, so for the sauce, I need to clean out this pot first. Get that heat on. And then I'll add about half a can of San Marzano tomatoes. And then just kind of like lightly crush these up. I don't really have the proper tool for this, but crush these up and let them simmer for 10 minutes. And then we'll add the rest of the ingredients. All right, so the rain has finally started to die down and if you can see by all these puddles and pools out here just how quickly you can get washed out if you come camp in one of these spots and you get caught in a rainstorm so I'm really glad that I didn't head down anywhere where I could get stuck but we'll let that simmer for about five minutes now I'm gonna add half of this can of diced tomatoes and then all my seasonings so for that we've got some garlic powder and I'm just gonna eyeball these because I don't really care some crushed red pepper flakes a little bit of onion powder a little bit of dried basil pinch of salt, and then just a little dash of sugar. We can mix all that up. Man, that smells so good. And that's really important because I feel like a lot of the times the sauce is kind of what makes the pizza. If you don't have a flavorful sauce, your pizza is not gonna be very good. So now we'll let that simmer for five minutes and then we'll get this bad boy all rolled out and make our pizza. All right, I've let this simmer for like five, 10 minutes. So now that's done, we can get the heat off that. And then before we start doing anything else, I'm gonna get this oven preheated as well so that it's ready to go. And there we go. Now, we can start rolling out that dough. And for those of you who don't know, before I was full-time in the van, the first job I had when I was in uh, high school was actually a pizza chef. So hopefully I can bring back some of those old skills. So I'm not sure if I fully remember the technique, but we're gonna see. I'm pretty sure you just kind of like press down and out and spun it around. There we go. That looks like just about the right size. Now I'll just repeat that again with the other half of dough. All right, so I think the, uh, Second one turned out a little bit better than this first one that I did, but we got both of these done, ready to go. Now we got to do is top them with some sauce, some cheese, some toppings, and get them in the oven. And we're eating. Never mind, because I completely forgot to cook the bacon, so I'm going to do that real quick. All right, so two things. Bacon's done, and I'm an idiot. I didn't realize bacon goes on at the end anyways. I'm not going to be putting it on the pizza before it goes in the oven, so I could have just made these and then did the bacon while these were cooking, but it's too late now. So let's get some sauce on these pies. There we go, there's one, and there's two. Hit these with some mozzarella. Pizza, beautiful looking pizzas. So pretty much all of the toppings are gonna go on after these are done in the oven, so I'm gonna pop these in there real quick. Hopefully they cook up nice, but my oven kind of sucks at regulating temperature and the bottom half of these pans gets super hot. So I'm really hoping they don't burn on the bottom, but I guess we'll see. I also have it set to 400 and it's currently at below 300. So we're just gonna really have to keep an eye on these and make sure that they're cooking up nicely, but there we go. Got them in there. While we wait for those, I'm gonna clean up this mess. Beautiful. All right, so the rain has completely stopped and passed over. 
pizzas probably need another two to three minutes. While we wait for that, it's time to hide this. And I found this little bush that has these kind of very distinct three rocks. I'm gonna take the middle one out, place this in there kind of right below it, and cover it up with that rock. So if you come out here and you're looking for it, look for a bush with rocks that look like that, and you'll be $250 richer with a free hoodie. And the bush that I hid it in is kind of right along the edge of the kind of gravel lot that I'm in, so. Should be easy to find if you head out here, good luck. Make sure you send me a video, DM me on Instagram, email me, let me know that you found it, and send me the hidden code that I put inside of that thing. All right, so we've got most of the kitchen cleaned up. I got my little topping station going on over there, but I guess it's the moment of truth. Oh, those look so good. Oh, wow. Look at that. Those are some good looking pizzas. And now that that storm has kind of passed, you can see the uh, mountain ranges off in the distance. It's actually kind of beautiful out here. I actually ended up taking my hoodie off while I was sitting in here with the door closed because it was so hot. But now that I have the door open again, it's kind of cold. So I'm gonna put it back on. So if you've been watching my channel for a while and you've tried any of the things that I've cooked, you would know that I've never steered you wrong. So just trust me when I say these are the best toppings in the world for a pizza. Up first, you got some center cut thick bacon. I also left the oven on because I'm gonna put a little bit more cheese on top of this so that these toppings stay put. Some small, finely diced pineapples. It's important that it's finely diced because if you leave them too big, they weigh your pizza down and it'll start to sag. You gotta make sure they're small, make sure they're spread out, and that's topping number two. Now, we'll hit that with just a little bit more cheese over the top, and then we'll throw these back in the oven for like two minutes and let that melt. And there are more toppings I'm gonna add. They just go on after those ones. So at first, hit them with a little bit of goat cheese. Hit them with a little bit of goat cheese. Not too much though, because this can make it taste a little bit too creamy. And it's good to do the goat cheese like right after because then it melts down into it and it won't roll around while you're eating it. All right, so after you get the goat cheese, hit it with some hot honey. You can either buy it from the store or make it yourself. It's just Tabasco and honey mixed together. Drizzle that on there. And then the final touch, just a little bit of basil on the top there. And obviously, you gotta have some ranch to dip it in because that's one of the best combos on earth. There we go. That's some van life pizza in a rain slash hailstorm. Man, am I excited to eat though. Oh, and it actually holds up pretty well. Shout out to my mom for buying me these like van life kitchen tools. Because one of them is pizza cutter. Which I haven't had for the longest time. Honestly, I prefer my crust a little bit thinner. So this is uh, not really ideal. Next time we'll do a little bit thinner crust, but still looks delicious. Throw myself down a little bit of ranch. Some Diet Coke, because you guys know I love Diet Coke. Or actually, Coke Zero, because Coke Zero is better than Diet Coke. Yeah, see that, 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 that crust is just a little bit too thick for the kind of pizza that I like. I typically like a thin crust. Dip it in some ranch. Cheers. That is so good. <laughs> wow. Usually when I make my own fresh pizzas and I make the dough, it's a little bit too doughy, but this is actually really good. Honestly, if you're gonna try just one of those toppings on your pizza, try the hot honey. It's like a game changer. Look at that crust. Fluffy, airy, and crispy on the outside. And I'm sure this would be way better if you cooked it in an actual pizza oven that kind of heats on the top so you didn't get this kind of just like bland looking crust without any crisp on it. But even just in the oven, I mean, that is a delicious looking pizza. Also, whoever does find that geocache, if you want to empty it out, write a little note on a piece of paper and stuff it in there for the next person to find. I think it'd be cool to start a little rotation of geocaches. But maybe one of these times I'll get like a bigger tin so you can like add stuff in and take it out a little bit easier. <clears throat> All right, I'm not going to lie. I uh, inhaled that pizza. The sun is like just peeking out between the clouds and the mountains. So it's like shining right in my eyes. But... I don't think I'm gonna be able to eat that second pizza because of how thick the crust was on that first one. So I might just save this for later. I'll probably get hungry again later tonight or maybe even for lunch tomorrow. But yeah, I think that was definitely the best homemade pizza that I've ever made in my entire life. That was uh, surprisingly extremely good. And since I cleaned up before, I mean, other than this mountain of dishes I have to do, there's not really much I gotta clean up now. All right, kitchen is whatever, mostly clean except for the dishes. I'll do those later. It's getting a little cold, honestly. 
This is like optimal sleeping temperatures for when you live in a van. Anything from like 45 to 69, and 69 is kind of pushing it, is the perfect temperature to sleep at night because it's always like 10 to 15 degrees warmer inside the van if you have the vent fans off and your doors closed. So nights like these living out of the van are the best and there's probably not too many of them left since we're getting into the summer and it's getting hot out again. So, so yeah, I'm gonna soak in the rest of this March cool weather while I can and really uh, get a good night's sleep tonight. Someone commented in my last video that they were upset that I didn't turn around and put my arms up and say, this is my kingdom, like I did in one of my other videos when I was standing in front of the sunset, so there you go. And also, now that the storm has passed us going that way, the wind was blowing like this, kind of right into the door. But now, since the storm has passed us, it's blowing this way, straight into that back wall. So I can leave this door open and I don't really feel any wind other than there's a decent amount coming from under the van. Like a constant stream of air, I can feel it on my ankles, but love it out here. What are you looking at? Lonely, I miss the lonely. I am so lonely, all on my own. All right, the sun has set on van life world. Capping off another day with a beautiful sunset out in the desert. I think for the rest of the night, my friends just texted me to hop on some Xbox. So I'm gonna play some of that and then go to bed and I will check in with you guys in the morning. night but I think that was the best night's sleep I've gotten in a long time in the van. Looks like most of if not all of the water has dried up that was pulled around the van last night from the rainstorm and it's perfectly clear out today not a cloud in the sky which is nice because it's been cloudy for like the last four or five days that I've been out here so it's nice to finally get some sun. So honestly this spot is pretty nice I would stay here another day but since I am putting the coordinates to my exact location in the description of this video, I can't do that. And I really hope that someone comes out here to find that geocache. But for now, for me at least, time to get out of here, leave this gravel parking lot behind, and hopefully someone messages me in the next couple days to a week saying that they came out here and found it. But first time we're doing it, so I guess we'll see. But for now, I'm gonna head out of here, find myself another spot. And I think I'm gonna drive a little bit more south today and double back and check out some spots that I missed when I was driving up here. But yeah, as always, I appreciate you guys watching. If you haven't already, click that subscribe button. It really does help. Good luck on coming out here and finding that geocache and I'll catch you guys next time.